John 1 says this, In the beginning the Word already existed. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The Word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. So the Word... God become flesh, the word became human, and he made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. That's our prayer this morning, is that you would see the glory of God the Father this morning and his Son, Jesus Christ, and that you would also see the glory of the Holy Spirit. Nothing worth more that could ever 
God, that is what we want this morning. We ask that you would fill our presence with your spirit. May your spirit just rest on each person who's here today. Lord, we've come from different Saturdays, and we've come into this Sunday morning, and we're all coming from different places, but we're here now in your presence. And we thank you that you have chosen to be with us this morning. Lord, we want this morning to be all about you, we want, we want to glorify you in the, in the songs that we sing to you as worship, in the, um, in the words that we speak, and also um, in your messenger this morning, Errol. Father, I pray that um, this morning we would see your glory. We pray this in your son's matchless name. Amen. And you could be seated. And uh, we'll let the kids go to kids' church now, if there's still any kids in here. I know some of them have gone already. Just want to bring um, a few announcements to your attention. Uh, if you're a guest visiting with us this morning, we have um, a, a guest speaker too. So Errol Lee is with us this morning. He's going to be bringing the message. And um, if you are new to OCC, we'd love to get to know you better. So in the card in the seat in front of you, in the seat pocket in front of you, there's a card. And if you want to fill that out, take it to the welcome desk and someone will give you a little gift if they haven't already. Uh, next Sunday at 4.30 p.m., there's going to be a, a barbecue at the Gillettes. Sign up at the welcome desk. And this is going to be um, our informal farewell to Mike and Janice. Last week, we kind of did more of a formal service. And um, next week, it's going to be just a time to visit with them and just enjoy their company and send them off. So uh, please join us next week at the Gillettes on Warminster Road. And um, basically what we're doing is we ask that you bring a salad or a dessert, and bring your lawn chair if possible. And we're going to be barbecuing sausage on a bun, so um, you might need to indicate on the sign-up sheet if you need a uh, plant-based option instead, and they will make sure that you're looked after for that. Uh, we also need an extra barbecue, so if you have an extra barbecue that you can bring for next Sunday, please contact Brenda uh, this week in the office. Also, uh, we had collected, or we've been collecting for a gift for Mike and Janice, and we're giving them, uh, we gave them a couple of gifts, but we also are giving them the gift of, of uh, travel. And I know that some of you had said that you were going to be bringing some cash this morning, because we could only accept cash for that gift. You can still put it in the, in the box on the back table this morning, and then we're, we're cut off. So um, if you brought your cash, you can put it in the table, and we will count it together with that and, and uh, put it on their gift certificate. There's going to be a junior high pool party, and that's going to be this Tuesday. So they're kicking off their summer, and it's going to be at the Sawatskis from 5 to 7 p.m. And everybody from grade four, from 6 to 8 are welcome. But if you're going into grade 6, you're welcome too. I guess I'm telling the wrong people. But if you're a parent of a grade 5 and they're going into grade 6, they can come too. And also the grade 8s who have gone on to high school or are going on to the high school group, they are welcome to come as well. It's going to be a really fun time. And over the summer, we're going to be spending some time in the Psalms. And that's going to be kind of our, our focus this, this summer as different, uh, we have quite a few gifted um, teachers in our uh, congregation. And so different ones of them are going to be speaking each week. And they're going to be speaking on a different Psalm. And so that's what our reading program is going to be uh, as well. So pick up a reading plan at, on the back table just outside the doors there, and you can follow along this summer and read through the Psalms with us. Kids Camp is going to be happening August 12th to 16th. And it's going to happen every morning that week from 9 to 12 p.m., 9, p 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And so we're going to be doing gymnastics, music, and dance with the kids. It's going to be a really, really great week. So if you know somebody who could come from, um, it's what grade, grades one to six. So it's basically anybody who's going into grade one and to six or out of? Okay, so if they've completed SK and if they've completed grade six, that range um, is welcome to register. And 
the, the theme this week is under the sea, and they're going to learn, learn about how to dive deeper with God. So the cost is $30 per child. Um, if you're registering three or more from your family, it's $25 per child. And we really, really need volunteers for that week. So have a look at your calendar and cross everything out that you had on your calendar so that you can be here and help for kids camp. So there's a number of things that you can do, but it's sometimes it's just really nice to have extra adults as a presence. You don't have to have a skill. You don't have to teach them how to do gymnastics. You don't have to teach them how to dance or sing, but being here and being a presence will be really great. So um, please speak to Shay this morning or Judy Page um, uh, or Amanda. I'm not sure if Amanda's here. I haven't seen her yet, but if Amanda's here, you can speak to Amanda too. And the NEMA Choir is back in Ontario, being um, hosted in Ontario and hosted in Aurelia, and we want to provide um, items for them. So on the back table, we've got, um, we always do like something that we collect. Each month we collect for somebody, and we're going to be collecting some things for NEMA. So we want um, hygiene items like shampoo, conditioner, deodorant, toothpaste, feminine hygiene products, body wash, soap, anything like that. Bring it and um, you can put it on the table there and we will collect it all this month for them. Also, um, of course, there are ways that you can support OCC either through the donation box at the back or online and um, you can see the different ways on the screen there. Um, we have a number of, of our church family who are in the hospital and who need prayer. And so we just want to be remembering them now and um, remember those who are hurting, both physically, spiritually, and also mentally. So just, let's pray for them right now. Father, we thank you that you are at work. You are at work in Aurelia. You are at work in our hearts. You are at work in this place here. Lord, we thank you so much for all that you are doing in our midst. Father, we pray especially this morning for Mike and Janice. Lord, I just pray that you would um, give them a sense of your peace this morning, of your presence with them, that they would know that you are calling them forward, even though they don't know where it's to, but um, that you are with them. <coughs> Father, we, we also want to lift up those of us, uh, of our church family who are in the hospital, Ron Stinson, and also Lisa Merle. Father, we pray that your, um, your, your loving arms would surround them and they would, they would know your love and your presence with them this morning. Lord, we pray for healing. We pray for recovery. And Lord, we pray that you would get the glory as well from all of that. God, we thank you um, for this beautiful weekend that we can celebrate uh, the birth of Canada. And so, Lord, I pray that as we do those festivities, that you would just um, help us to be your eyes and ears and your hands and feet in Aurelia as we um, socialize with other people, as we uh, visit other people. Lord, um, we want to be Jesus to others that we encounter, and we ask that you would help us to do that. We pray all of these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, everyone. Good morning. So it is such an honor and a pleasure to be here this morning with you. Um, I am Errol Lee, and I feel a part of this church. I really do. <laughs> you know, I don't feel like uh, a visitor. I feel like, you know, I feel at home. And so for that reason, it's very cool to be here after um, Pastor Mike and Janice uh, had their last Sunday last week. I feel like, you know, I am here as a family member, just taking on the mantle until we um, together have the next pastor 
come in to um, be our shepherd. And we pray, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm led to pray right now for that individual. And so, Father, in Jesus' precious name, we pray together, Lord God, as Mike had said last week, for someone who is uniquely placed by you to come and to shepherd this wonderful congregation, Father, that you have brought together a uh, gathering here in your name, Father, in this particular time and city. And Lord God, we thank you for that individual and his or her family, Father God, that you are, have equipped them already and that you will place them here in your time. And in the meantime, Father God, that you continue to um, have us gather in love because Lord, that is the main thing, is to be here in your love, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. So my friends, today I'm gonna take on a little bit of a big topic and try to simplify it. <laughs> and so uh, the title of my message, I don't know if you can see, yep, you can see it. Um, is God the giver and the gift. And we heard the scripture read earlier, John 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And I mean, that must be the most famous scripture in all the world, right? But it should be. It is encompassing of the world. For God so loved the world that he gave. Who did he give? His son. And so, you know, we're going to look at what that means. His son. And so, I want us to think about God's son in a way that the scripture reveals him. Christology. Christology takes place from uh, below, where we can look at Jesus through the synaptic gospel and discover who he is as a human being like us. And we can also look at him th from the history of the people of Israel, you know, uh, and we can also look at him from above, where we see who he is, who this gift that God gave to us is. And I hope that we will be able to comprehend that in, in a way that help us to live our Christian life as Jesus exemplifies, but to know who he is, this gift. And so, it's impossible to me, in my opinion, to truly be a Christian without the Trinity, without the Trinity. Maybe you came into your faith to begin with um, by believing in Jesus and what Jesus accomplished. Um, and not really understand that you were drawn and given the revelation of who he is by the Spirit. Uh, maybe you knew that Jesus was sent by the Father, but not really understand who Jesus is. And so, I hope that we can have that type of understanding. You see, the Trinity is at the center of our Christianity. It's at the center of our Christianity. And so we need to talk about the Trinity. And so when we think about the Trinity, we think that God loved us through his beloved Son, and he is with us 
by his spirit and his presence is with us by his spirit in love. And so a gentleman by the name of Francis Church and said this, the Trinity is to, is to be received by faith in the same way that we come to God and adored by love. So I wrote this song that I'm gonna share with you and I had the words um, for you to see, but we couldn't get the words to play. So listen to the words. They're very, I mean, we can do a whole message just on those words alone, but we're not going to. I want you to just to focus mostly on the course, but still take in these words and, and let them speak to you and contemplate them and how they relate to you as a Christian. They're about God's uh, attributes. And Matthew Barrett said this. I'm just going to... Matthew Barrett said... Now, Matthew Barrett is the author of the um, Simple Trinity. Matthew Barrett said, God is not made up of parts, nor is he compound or compo composite um, in nature. That means God does not possess his uh, attributes as if he were one thing and his attributes another thing, like we do. You know, um, we possess attributes, but our attributes are uh, different, expressed in different ways, and they're not completely who we are. However, that's not the case with God. It says that, all that is in God is God. So God's attributes are God. So to say God is love and to say God is good is not in part but in whole. It's all of who God is. God is compassionate and he is merciful but not in part but in whole. All that's in God is God. So this song that I wrote, I wrote from the Doctrine of God class. And when I wrote this song, uh, I was not able to sing the song without crying. I'm not going to cry right now. I could sing it without crying now. But I hope that uh, the song just speaks to you as it spoke to me then. i 
praise God. Thank you. He is our delight. And so, you know, I want to begin from our word uh, reading today, earlier. In the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God, and the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. So, now I want you to read the reality of this verse. Praise God. The gospel, the synoptic gospel, and say the chronic, the chronot- the chronotical gospel. Sorry, the chronotical gospel takes us from Matthew chapter one, where we encounter Jesus as Emmanuel, God with us, to John chapter twenty, where we see Thomas acknowledging. Jesus as my Lord and my God. Jesus, the gift of God, is God. Jesus is God. And so, there was a man by the name of Arius. Um, And this is uh, back in AD... 325. The church fathers uh, gave each other a challenge. And they said, choose a verse, a challenging verse, and break it down um, for us. Right? And this was not necessarily for this individual. But uh, the church fathers took this verse and they were breaking it down. And one of the individuals, Um, he understood the scripture as God creating the son. And so that the son and the father were not of the same substance, were not of the same nature. And so in three, uh, this created a great uproar within the church. It threatened to... uh, tear apart the fabric of the early church. This was an emergency because the person who um, was interpreting the scripture this way was a person of influence and that their words mattered. And so in order to refute this, what the church considered at that point, some of the church fathers um, to be uh, uh, unorthodox, in order to refute that, in AD 325, the church fathers came together and they put together a scripture based, uh, sorry, a creed based on the scripture that became, even today, very important to the entire church. We would say the Catholic church, right? As in the universal church. Doesn't matter what denomination we're from, this is important to all church. This is what we believe. And that was to say that the Father and the Son are of the same substance. They are of the same usia. And usia means substance, right? It's a Latin word that means usia. So they are humo usius. Um, that word up there, humo usius, that the father did not create the son, but that the son is begotten of the father. And so the father and the son, as Jesus says, I and the father are one. And so that was important because to acknowledge Jesus as God means that as The scripture says in Colossians 1, verse 15 through 17, Christ is 
the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and in and is supreme over all creation. Through him, God created everything, not just some things, but everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made things we can see and things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdom, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything, not just some things, but everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else. And not only that, he holds it together. All creation, even at this present moment, is held together by Jesus. And so when we say God gave his only begotten son, with this understanding of who Jesus is, the the visible image of the invisible God, we understand that the gift, is, God is the gift and the giver. God is the gift and the giver. And so we go back to John chapter 1 verse 4 to 5. The word gave life to everything that was created. <laughs> you know, everything that was created. And his life brought light to everyone. The light shined in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. So, who gave life to everything? Jesus gave life to everything. Right? In the same way that we can say God gave life to everything, Jesus gave life to everything. The Father and the Son are of the same substance. The, the Son is not like the Father. There is a word called, uh, instead of homoousius, homoousius means like the Father. Uh, and that was the heresy. God didn't just, God didn't create Jesus and made him like himself. No, Jesus is the same substance of the Father. He is the only begotten Son of the Father. Um, and so, the one who is the true light. Light from light, infinitude, eternity. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created. But the world did not recognize him. Imagine, imagine, this is how real this is, that Jesus can come in here right now. I mean, he's here by his spirit, right? He's here with each of us. But if he came in here now, in his physical person, and he was talking to you, you might not recognize him, right? You may recognize him after speaking to him, kind of like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, right? They're walking along, and Jesus is now resurrected, you know, and they're talking about what was and how they thought Jesus was going to be the the Messiah, the one to deliver Israel, right? And Jesus opened the scripture to them and started talking to them. And that's when they recognized him. Maybe, hopefully, it would be the same for us. That if we hear Jesus speak to us today, if he were to walk in here, that we would recognize him based on his word, right? And how he opened the scripture and about himself to us. Well, this morning, we are hearing from Jesus because these words are about him. And the scripture is a witness to who he is, the living word of God. And so, he came into the world. The world was created by him, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. 
Wow, who are the people of God? Who are the people of God? Who do you think the people of God are? We are. We are. We are the people of God. It's a hard question to answer, you think, because when we think of the people of God, we think of Israel. And yes, you're right. But it's one continuous story. The church being the people of God does not take away from Israel being the people of God. Because remember, we understand and learn about Jesus from below through the history and the covenant and the relationship with God and his people. But it's one continuous story. The story of the people of God is our story. We are the people of God. And if Jesus were to come to us, hopefully we would recognize him and embrace him and worship him as who he is, God. They, he came to his own and, his, and even they re rejected him. But to all who believe in him, <laughs> you know, Excuse me for a sec. Okay. A way to receive Jesus today as his people is to, as he would say, I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. You know, I was in prison and you visited me. You know, this is how we receive Jesus today. And so... Praise God. And, and also in the way we love one another. That you demonstrate that you're my disciples from the way you love one another. And that he prayed that we would love one another even as he has loved us. We receive Jesus today in this way. If we don't do that, then we are also rejecting him. And so... Those who, but all who believe in him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. That's how we became children of God and God's people, is that we believe by faith, as I said earlier, that we receive the Trinity by faith and love him and adore him, you know? Um, so, all those who accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. I want to emphasize this just before I go on, is that we confidently approach the throne of the Father as his children by grace only because Jesus truly is the son of the father by nature. Only because Jesus is truly the son of God by nature. What I mean by that is if the son is not the eternally begotten of the father's essence, we can never confidently know that we can be born again. And so, they who received him and believe in him, who, gave, who he gave the right to become the children of God, are born not with physical birth, the result of uh, human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. A birth that comes from God. Everybody knows about a physical birth. If I were to talk about, you know, um, a baby and, and how we all came about, uh, immediately we think about, you know, our birth, right? And there are different ways, uh, thank God for uh, modern technology and, you know, um, if there are complications, that, hey, there's still 
uh, ways of you being born, and that's not as, tra as traditional as we think. But birth is, we think of a baby being born into the world as a human being. Uh, Nicodemus, in John chapter 3, when he went to uh, Jesus by night, um, and we know why he went to Jesus by night, you know, because he wanted to go secretly, because there were people who would be angry with him, perhaps, if they know that he would seek out Jesus this way, to ask Jesus this question. You know, we know that you are from God. We know that you came from God because no one can do the things you do. No one can do these miraculous and amazing things that you do. You know, you think about John the Baptist. John is in jail and he sends his disciples to Jesus to say, are you the one that we were waiting for that you'd come or should we look for someone else, right? And Jesus referred to the things that he was doing to say, to tell John, the blind, their eyes are open, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. You know, he pointed to the very things that Nicodemus is talking about in this particular moment. No one can do these things. And, and what you sang about earlier, you know, no one can do the things that you are doing unless God be with them, right? And then Jesus just went straight to it. You must be born again. Nicodemus is like, what? What do you mean being born again? Can a man be born when he's old and re-enter into his mother's womb a second time and be born again? No. You are a teacher of Israel and you don't know what I'm talking about? And then we skip further into John 3, verse uh, 6 and 7. And we see what it means. Human can produce only human life. This is what Jesus is saying. But the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So... Don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. So we see in John chapter 1 that those who receive, who believes in Jesus, who recognize him, you know, are born of the Spirit. There we have Father sending his son into the world who he created the world through. And then we have uh, being born of the spirit. It's impossible for anyone to come to God and to be born again, to become a child of God, to become God's people, without God being Trinity, without God being one, yet three. The Father sends, gives the Son. The Son, John 3, verse 16, the Son ministers in the Spirit. So, Luke 4, verse 8, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. You know, he sent me to proclaim release to the captive, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set free those who are oppressed. Jesus ministered in the fullness of the spirit. Yes, Jesus is God, but he's also fully man. We call this the um, hypostatic union. So Jesus has two natures. He has a human nature. He's fully like us. He experienced all of life. He, he addressed things like poverty, 
He cared about the poor. He addressed things like taxes. He sent Peter to take a coin from the fish's mouth to pay the taxes. And he says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God, right? When they, when they tried to trap him. Jesus addressed adultery. If we think it in our hearts, we are already committed it. If we, he addressed divorce. Moses gave you this right to uh, divorce each other because of the hardness of your heart. But from the beginning, God intended for there to be a husband and a wife, and they should represent God together as one, leaving mother and father and becoming one. Jesus suffered and died in the world. Jesus was a real human being, just like us. There's nothing that we experience as human beings that Jesus know not of. The scripture tells us that he was tempted in every way that we were. The scripture tells us that he was a man of sorrow, a man of sorrow. He was a human being, but he was also divine. So I say that to say this, is that Jesus ministered as a human being in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And so he did all that he did through the Spirit of God. Open the eyes of the blind, you know, uh, set the captives free, minister to the poor and their need, you know, all by the Holy Spirit. And so, God loves us very much. He showed his love by giving us his only son. God did this, you know, so that everyone may believe and have eternal life, his only begotten son. God gave his son who ministered in the spirit and God also gave his son over to be crucified for us. Jesus prayed. Remember when Jesus was praying and Jesus said, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he says, not my will, but your will be done. He says, if it's possible, Father, take this cup from me, if it's possible. But I don't want my will to be done. I want your will to be done. How did that work out? Well, fast forward a little bit. To Matthew 27, verse 46. God gave his son over to be crucified. For us to be reconciled. He said, Eli, Eli, lama sabasani. My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Why have you abandoned me? And so... God gave his son over to be crucified so that we who are sinful can be forgiven of our sins. Jesus was born a sinless death. That's how he's like us, but different. He was born a sinless death. He lived a sinless life, though tempted in every way we were. But he died a sin-bearing death. He, on the cross, was there because he was representing us. And so, God raised him up as his righteous servant who, on the cross, defeated sin and death for all of us to be reconciled to the Father, to come into relationship with the Trinity. And how did God do this? The same spirit that raised Jesus to life lives in us if we 
confess today that Jesus is who he is, that same spirit will make us born again. That same spirit. Now, I'm going to wrap up in a moment, but just before I do, it's impossible for us to come into a relationship with God without the Holy Spirit revealing to us who God is. But it's impossible for us to know who God is without God giving his son who's the exact physical expression of the invisible God. Jesus is how we know God. And so Jesus tells us that no one comes to the Father but through him. I am not going to assume that everyone here has made that connection. That everyone here knows that the way to come into relationship with God is to be by the Spirit given an insight into who Jesus is and what Jesus did. That Jesus is the gift of God who was given for you, who laid down his life on the cross as a gift to you so that you can be forgiven of your sin and be reconciled with God by his Spirit. And so I'm just going to have everyone in a moment close their eyes and I'm going to pray. And if you are unsure that you have this relationship with God, then I want you to, by faith, know that God will accept you because of what the Son did on the cross. And because the Holy Spirit by the Father brought him back to life. The Bible tells us that if we believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and confess with our mouth that the Father raised him back to life, we will be saved. That, what that means is that if we believe this in our hearts, we can have a relationship with God. And so I want to encourage you in the Lord right now and, and let you know that you can have this relationship with God. And so, as I read the last scripture, right now, John chapter 1, verse 14. So the word became human and made his home among us, Jesus. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's one and only Son, No one has ever seen God, but the unique one, the begotten Son of God, who is himself God, is near the Father's heart, and he revealed God to us. Jesus is God with us. And the way he's with us now He's not with us physically because he's representing us in heaven physically, but he's with us by his spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of Jesus with us. And the Holy Spirit is here right now to help you to come into a relationship with the Father through the Son. And so I'm gonna have every eyes closed and every head bowed and I'm just gonna pray. And you discern where you are in your own heart with God. Do you, have you received Jesus as your Lord? As the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart, do you know that you have a relationship with the Father through his Son? 
do you know for sure that God is your father, Jesus is your brother and savior, and that the Holy Spirit is your renewer? If you want to make sure of this, just confess these words after me. And, and let's have the whole church pray to support whoever that may be. Father, in Jesus' precious name, I come before you and ask you for forgiveness of my sins. I believe that Jesus died for my sins and that, the, and that the Holy Spirit raised him to life. And by that same Spirit, I pray, Father, be my Savior. Come into my life and make me a part of your family. Make me a part of the family of God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Father. If you made that decision and asked Jesus into your heart, speak to one of the elders in the church and let them know that this is something that, you know, um, you have decided to do so that the church can support you. This is a loving church, a loving community. I know that. I'm a part of it. And so we want you to be supported and we want you to learn more about God. It's a big concept, Trinity, but it's also simple, is that God is simple essence subsiding in three person. And it's impossible to know him without the spirit helping you to understand who the son is so that you can come to the father. And you did that today. And so just tell someone, you know, um, so that you can be supported properly and learn and grow and be discipled, nurtured in this family. And so I'm going to have the praise team come back up and uh, release us in worship. Praise God. One, two, three. sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you how about you stand with us We live for you. worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and through you are all things. You deserve the glory.
I will build my life upon your love. And I our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace. Amen. You are worthy of it all.